I'd like to call to order the uh, June 10th, 2021 meeting of the Board of Commissioners, Town of Mint Hill, North Carolina. We do have a quorum present here this evening. Uh, I'd like to ask Commissioner Cochran to uh, lead us in our invocation, please. Let us pray. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you give us in life. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful weather you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for the folks that are here tonight, Lord. I just pray, Father, that you'll watch over and guide all the decisions that are made, and may they be made in your will. Father, tonight I ask special blessing on Ted Biggers and his family with the death of his mother. Father, we thank you so much for her life and all that she meant to the people in this town. Lord, just go with us and guide us in all the decisions that are made, that they be made in what you would have us to do for this town. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I ask if everybody please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, item number three is additions, deletions, or arrangement of agenda items. You have in your packet an addition, uh, an addition of 5J, which is the resolution of support for the stormwater rate increase. Uh, do we have anything in addition to that? All right, here, nothing else. Uh, item number four, approved minutes of the May 13th, 2021 regular meeting. Make a motion, we approve, Mayor. I have a motion and a second. Have any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item number five, consent agenda items. Uh, item number or A is accept meeting schedule change from no, for November 2021 meeting. B, adoption of ordinance related to code violation appeals process. C, accept May tax collector's report. D, accept April treasurer's reports and financial. E, accept budget amendments. F, accept the staff engineer job description. G, accept resolution authorizing upset bid process for property located on Lebanon Road. H, authorize town manager to execute 20, 20, 21, and 22 paving contract with Blythe Construction Incorporated. I, authorize town manager to execute 2021 20, sidewalk contract with Carolina Cajun Concrete Incorporated. And J, uh, author approve resolution of support for stormwater rate increases. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item number six. I'll now open the public hearing on ZC21-6 filed by Richard A. Peniston to allow a rezoning from R to RCD to allow a new church located at 5345 Willgrove Mint Hill Road, tax parcel number 137-051-11 and 5341 Willgrove Mint Hill Road, tax parcel number 137-051-21. The applicant is present. If you would state your name and address, please, sir, you have the floor. Uh, my name is Richard Peniston. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners. I'm pleased and honored to present this application for rezoning uh, for the Midhoney Alem Catholic Church of Geesright in Charlotte uh, at the addresses you just mentioned. Uh, briefly, I want to, uh, well, first of all, am I speaking too close or too far from the You're microphone? Fine. You're fine. <clears throat> first of all, I want to... Uh, uh, the, I'm sure the name uh, of the church sounds uh, different to all of us. It did to me. Um, Medhami Alem means Holy Savior. And uh, Gizrite is an ancient language. The Catholic Church is a single church. However, it does have many independent churches under its uh, umbrella. Uh, 23 different ones in the east and one in the west. The one we see most frequently in the West is based in Latin language and, and is the one we're most familiar with it. Uh, however, there's uh, Benedictine, Coptic, 
um, Armenian, uh, other ones in the East, and they have their own liturgical rites and are based in their own la ancient languages. Uh, this church is based on uh, the coast of the Red Sea and uh, the ancient language it's based in is Gez, G-E-E-Z. That's where that comes from. Uh, so just for understanding, it is a Catholic church for all intents and purposes otherwise. Um, about the uh, property in question, it's uh, located on Willgrove Mint Hill Road with approximately 650 feet of road frontage. There's two homes on it. Uh, about six and a half acres in total. Uh, one home, which is about 400 feet off the road, has over 3,200 square feet, and is, it is intended in this application for that home to be used uh, for uh, worship, uh, fellowship, uh, prayer, rosaries, and uh, related church activities. The other home, it's intended to be for uh, study, uh, prayer, and uh, um, uh, things of that nature. Uh, at this time, the uh, applicants do not tend to make any changes to the property. There is a long paved driveway leading to the rear home and a shorter one leading to the front home. The rear home is uh, amply screened by mature shrubbery uh, and trees, and the, the uh, front home, which is close to Wilgrove Mint Hill Road, is uh, also surrounded by attractive plantings. Uh, the uh, uh, Stormwater Services uh, Department of Charlotte Mecklenburg has uh, given a waiver at this time based on the use uh, and activities there. Uh, however, of course, if uh, in the future, uh, construction of a new church or facility there, that would have to be reviewed again, as would any requirements the town might have or any uh, uh, or the county or the state for either the road or stormwater. Uh, at the present time, it is anticipated that there would be as uh, no more than 15 cars entering and leaving on the weekend. Uh, the property would not typically be used or occupied nor used as a residence uh, during the week. Uh, it uh, will, uh, uh, the paved area will accommodate approximately eight cars at a time. And uh, there's a, areas adjoining the driveway that would easily accommodate further cars to the extent that there would be more than that. Uh, the, um, uh, a couple of members of the uh, a church are here uh, and uh, stand up. Um, they uh, immigrated from er Eritrea on the Red Sea. They've been here approximately 30 years. They have families and businesses and um, are uh, excited to become part of this community. They plan to be assets in the community and promise to be the best neighbors ever. Uh, thank you. Very good, thank you very much. Uh, questions, Commissioner Long? Not at this time. Well, I do have the item that's showing, you're speaking of two homes, uh, Mr. Pennison. Yes. The one. The one yes. in the Miss Mull, Brenda Mullis's house in uh, is not shown on this survey. I don't have a survey of that property, but, but it, it's the it's that, the outlined in green block. That is inclusive. Hers. Yes. Okay. I thought that's my quick. Qu thank you, Commissioner Cochran. Uh, the only question I have is about parking, and you. Uh, I didn't realize there wouldn't be any more cars than that, but that's because. Uh, 10 to 15 cars should be ample parking in there. For it's that. a small community at this time. Or pro Tim Dalton. Uh, no, you good presentation. You answered all my questions I had. So. Thank you. Commissioner Holton. What, what are the typical days of service for this particular church? Sunday. Just Sunday? I expect they might have activities on um, Saturday possibly as well, but 
uh, like all the rest of us, they have jobs and businesses. And yeah. It's a, it's a typical uh, uh, Catholic church. So you said average of 15 people there. Is that how, like, how many active members are there right now within that church? Or uh, I'm told that uh, it would be active members, including families with children, uh, are fewer than 50. Okay. And then where are they meeting now? At uh, uh, different Catholic churches all around because uh, they um, are scattered about. And so different ones go to St. Luke's. They go to one, uh, um, uh, the one on Idlewild Road uh, and uh, around the area. The, the intention is to be able to have some services uh, in the ancient language of their, which is very important in their faith. So looking towards the future, are they looking to, if they outgrow this space, to build something else on that land? Yes. Okay. That's kind of their vision is just a, this is the starter and then it'll. Yes, exactly. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody present here this evening that wanted to speak to this public hearing? We have anybody send anything in to speak to this public hearing? Hearing nothing else, thank you very much, and we will close public hearing on ZC 21-6. Item number seven, I'm going to open the public hearing on ZC 21-7, filed by MHIP LLC to allow a rezoning from IGCD to change conditions at Mant Hill Business Park, tax parcels 139-092-17, 139-092-17, Nine dash O nine two dash three three one three nine dash O nine two dash one nine one three nine dash O nine two dash two zero one three nine dash O nine two dash two one one three nine dash O nine two dash two two one three nine dash O nine two dash two three one three nine dash O nine two dash two four one three nine dash O nine two dash two five 139-092-26, I see the applicant is with us this evening. If you would state your name and your address for the record, sir, you have the floor. My name is David Jones, uh, 9827 Thorn Ridge Drive and in Indian Trail. Um, my family, well, basically, I got thrown into this because my brother's out of town this weekend. Um, but uh, my family and his, my brother's in-laws bought this land 20, 21 years ago. We went through the zoning. Um, Mint Hill had nothing like, you know, no, no other land with industrial, uh, industrial uh, zoning. And uh, anyway, at that time, we decided to put the 100-foot 100, 100 buffer in to any residential property. Um, since then... There's been two lots in the park that y'all have, have approved to change the buffer to 50 foot. Um, the main reason we're here is to try to go and do the whole park from 100 to 50 foot. One, to save the other six or seven partials time of coming to this to do this zoning and then coming back to do other zoning. And also to keep y'all from having to go through six or seven more public hearings for the same thing. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, you know, the, the, the biggest thing with the buffer, the 50-foot buffer, um, lots three and four, which is that to the top right, the, top, the little dotted lines on the top right, that's three and four is this way, the little one at the end of the cul-de-sac. Um, that, that's the only two partials that are still available, and they're actually under contract right now. Um, with doing this, uh, the, with the change in the buffer from 100 to 50-foot, they will gain about three acres of access, uh, of accessible property. There is also, you see the creek that runs through there, there's also the sewer line that runs through there, and it's a pretty deep ravine, so this is gonna allow them to be able to use some more property that they're gonna have to not be able to use because of the sewer. Um, it's just, we're just trying to help them because we were asked to help them and we figured we would probably ask for the other six or seven partials too, so trying to save us time and y'all time. Um, yeah, and there again, two and two, lot two and thirteen. The second lot at the top that's broken in half. They've actually done, I think a two and two A now. 
Um, that's already been done. That's Lanier coming off Cabarrus Road and Lanier Materials, and 13, which is the first one on 51, which is my my facility, which is CNM Leasing. Um, both those buffers have already been changed in the last. I know ours was done about three months ago. I think Lanier's was at least in the last year. So if it, I'll be glad to ask, answer any questions if I can. If not, I think John's been very involved. I don't know if you were here when it first went through 20 years ago, but I don't remember because I wasn't involved then either. My parents were. But uh, if I can't get you an answer tonight, my brother will be back and I can get an answer Monday or Tuesday for you. Questions, Commissioner Holton? I think my biggest concern is these buffers are set up as a protection boundary, especially between residential. Correct. And the ones that have been approved and changed are out on the outer area, which are not bordering residential, correct? Uh, no, they are residential. The one on our lot, there was two there. Uh, oh, sorry, the top left. Uh, both of those are residential, but the houses were a long ways away. It's been a long time since I've walked the whole property. I mean, probably 15, 18 years. Yeah. Um, but I don't remember any house being within 100 or 150 foot of the end of the property lines. And I, th I mean, just being completely honest from my point of view, I mean, I understand what you're trying to do is just wrap it all up at one shot here. I would rather do it on a case-by-case -case basis personally because I don't know what's going in on these two lots right now. And with that being residential back behind there. Well, I know three and four, I've, John has seen uh, Chuck had it and I had, he showed me one. They're planning on coming off Joe Mac Drive and putting an office right there. And then to the left going up where that double one is, two and three, it's actually two, but it's two and two A. Mm -hmm. They're gonna have to run a drive there and put a bridge in over the sewer in the creek and then they'll come, I believe it's right below that point, probably 150 yards off the property line, and I think they're going to build some kind of building there. Yeah. And I guess the rest would be just be storage yard. I'm not 100% positive on that. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's just my point of view there. I mean, I understand what you're trying to accomplish here. To me, it's just a cart in front of a horse type deal. But like I said, I'm just one. I understand. <laughs> Appreciate it. That's Thank why you. we're here. <laughs> Thank you. Pro Tim Dalton. I actually think it's a pretty good idea because I actually work out there and uh, the land, there's some, there's a couple of lots back in there that are almost landlocked uh, because of this. Uh, and uh, I've done some investigating. It seems like the majority of lots are, a maximum is 50. And for this to be 100, I think it's a, it's a little steep from the beginning. So I have no problem with it. Mr. Cochran. Uh, are the lots that have not been extended or shortened to 50 foot, have, is there, and I've never walked it, you said it's been a long time since you walked it, but the border around it, is it a wooded, is it got, is, is, I think everything but the, uh, there's one lot that does have some woods, it's actually behind Dale Dalton where he mm -hmm. works behind Griffin and they actually own it. There's a field there. Um, I can't remember how far back the property goes into the pines, but I do think it goes a little ways. I mean, I don't know how far, maybe 15, 20 feet. So right but now, most of the property is going to have a board of trees around it. Yes, okay, that's fine. Yes, sir. Commissioner Long? No, sir. Thank you. Is there anybody present this evening here to speak to, to ZC 21-7? If you'd like to come forward, sir. If you would uh, state your name and address for the record, please, you have the floor, sir. Yes, sir. My name is Scott Hamilton, and I don't reside at this residence, but I own 14024 Cabarrus Road, which is on the map, the center property between, there's three residences there. Okay. Um, I'm that center property. So I guess my basic question is, um, that is wooded between us, but by increasing that buffer, what could that potentially mean for my property? I mean, I don't know if that business park is zoned light industrial or manufacturing, what could eventually happen that could be an issue, you know, bordering my property, I guess, is, is my question. John? Well, uh, no, I'm sorry. One more to the right. That one. Yep. Correct. 
Um, so maybe you can share with them. Yeah, the, they gave me an and I don't know, like I said, my brother gave this to me. And this, I guess, is preliminary because they hadn't brought it to y'all yet, correct? Unofficial. Um, this is that, this lot um, okay. and this lot. So this would be your property. They're pro proposing to put a building here because that, you know, the ditch is there, the big ditch. Okay. And the sewer line, and then taking a drive this way with a bridge and putting a building here, which if this is 50 foot, that's another 75 to 80. And then this, I'm assuming, would just be storage. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't know of what kind or so it's you, a grading company. I do know that. Okay, that was my at question. It, but what, they're what know, what they're not going to be doing work there all the time. They're going to be out on the jobs, I'm assuming. Gotcha. Okay. That would that, that's just my concern is how would that affect my property? You know, uh, right now there is woods there, but I don't know. Does that fifty foot buffer mean they can literally come to within fifty feet of my property and have, you know, a building or storage or whatever? If this was approved, that's exactly right. So w what would remain is a fifty foot undisturbed buffer. So fifty foot would be the extent of their development. Gotcha. Okay. That answer your question, sir? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just as a property owner, all I can do is just kind of express my opinion. Is that? You can. That you can right? during okay. this public hearing. It'll then go to the planning board next. Okay. And the planning board will ask questions and take all this up again. You're welcome to speak to them as well. Okay. You're also welcome to send email to all the commissioners and mayor sitting up here and let us know how you feel about it. My suggestion was going to be, before I gave you all that information, that the applicant get with the neighbors in those houses before you guys end up going to the planning board, making sure they know what you're doing over there, and make sure and you answer all their questions, because we all want to be good neighbors here no matter what we're doing in Mint Hill. So uh, if you guys would take that upon yourselves, that would just uh, just a personal request from me, and I would appreciate it. Mayor, can I can I add one thing, Mayor? Yes. Just so you know, and actually this kind of answers your question too. Um, the, the way this park is set up, when they finally do propose their development for the site, it will have to go back through this process. So you will see it. You will see exactly what they're proposing and you will be able to see the buffer and exactly where they're putting the buildings, the parking and all that. Gotcha, okay. So we'll, I'm sorry, will I get another notice letting me know when that'll occur? That's right. So, yes. Gotcha. Yes. So if they file a rezoning for that lot, you will receive another notice. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. And I know on our, our, our property now, which faces 51, right. you know, they've made us put, they made us put all those bushes in the screening to kind of screen everything from the road. So right. I don't know, but I'm assuming the planning board would probably require that. I, I don't know. It, it could be included in conditional zoning because that's what we call it, conditional. So it's a possibility. But I would ask that y'all get together. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you. Is there anybody else here to speak to public hearing ZC 21-7? Did we receive anything from the public that needs to be read into the record? If not, I will now close public hearing on ZC 21-7. Item number eight, public hearing on ZC 21-8, filed by the Town of Mint Hill to allow a text amendment to update Unified Development Ordinance to comply with 160D. And who's making that, Brad Jennifer, are you making that presentation? Well, I'm giving sort of an introduction. Would you like me to go to the- Please, please do. Yeah, I'm taking my computer with me though. That's fine. Right. If you'll just state your name and address for the record, please. You might identify your while you're here too, if you'd like. Well, I am Jennifer Nancaro. I'm acting as the town attorney. And you're going to have to give me a minute to pull up our address. Because I have not memorized that. Michelle's got it on the record already. We'll, we'll make sure it gets in Yes. All right. So what I wanted to talk to you about is why we, as your town attorney, are recommending that you make the changes to your existing ordinances. So chapter 160D is a new chapter of the North Carolina General Statutes. And the purpose of the statute 
is to combine two statutes or chapters that already exist. So you've got 153A and 160A, and those are now combined into 160D. And these are the statutes that enable the city and county's um, development regulations. So 160D, what it's really doing is taking those two statutes, combining them, and making them into a more co coherent, logical order. That's the main function. There aren't huge substantive changes, but there are some substantive changes. There are um, clarifications to existing statutes. There are some changes in procedures. And so myself and Kevin Bringawat have looked through your statutes, and so has John Horde, at, and he did a great job, by the way, and have tried to make that, not tried, we've made them in compliance with the existing 160D. So it's really not optional that you, you can't really decide not to make your ordinances be in conformance with the new ordinance. And that is what we did for you. And I think that last thing's the key point that we need to remember. We really don't, don't have an option on it. It's just something that we've got to do. And this is kind of going through the steps of it. Anybody have any questions that they want to ask with that in mind? Is there anybody here from the public that wants to speak to public hearing ZC21-8? Do we have any input via email or anything else? Hearing nothing, I'll now close the public hearing on ZC21-8. Thank you very much. Number nine is public comments. Is there anybody here present that would like to make some overall general public comments to the board? It's good to see faces out there again. Amen. Uh, and the smiles on them too as well. Did we have any uh, submitted to for, be read into the record? Okay, very good. Item number 10 was discussion and decision on ZC 21-4 filed by the city of Charlotte Water to allow a rezoning from R to R CD to allow a new elevated water tank on portion of parcel number 135-331-05, which was 12910 Palomino Drive. The city of Charlotte has requested that that be deferred at this time. <clears throat> Item number 11 was discussion on ZC21-5 filed by Souter Properties to allow a rezoning from R to IG CD to develop a new business park located at parcel numbers 137-151-20, which is 10905 Blair Road, and 137-151-22, which is 102, 10821 Blair Road. They've also requested a deferral until the July 8th, 2021. So we're now at item number 12. Discussion and decision on Town of Mint Hill budget for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2022. Town Manager Welch. Thank you, Mayor, Board of Commissioners. I uh, present for your consideration this evening the proposed budget for fiscal year 2022 as follows. General fund in the amount of $23,682,017. Powell Bill fund in the amount of $740,000. Stormwater fund in the amount of $537,149. Police forfeiture fund in the amount of $50. Infrastructure fund in the amount of $50. And tourism fund in the amount of $277,150. Uh, that maintains our tax rate at 25 and one half cent and maintaining our vehicle fee at $10. Happy to answer any questions. And of course, these are the same numbers from our last budget workshop. Right. Commissioner Long, any questions at this time? No, sir. Good job, Brian. Thanks, sir. Commissioner Cochran. No, sir. Great job, Brian. Right? Right. Mayor Pro Tem. No. Commissioner Holton. No, sir. Only one I've got is to thank you very much for all the hard work and long hours you put in up here. Thank I you. went by many times and caught you burning the lights late at night. And we appreciate all the work that you did. Hearing none, do we have a motion on the so moved. budget? Second. I have a motion and a second. Do I have any further discussion on the budget for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2022? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes unanimously. Item number 13, 
appointments to the planning board. We have uh, three, well, truthfully, four members of the planning board whose terms are currently getting ready to expire. Uh, those are Jennifer Manchester, Chip Todd, and Eric Tyson. They, we have been in contact with all of them. They wish to continue in those seats. Just so that you know, you also have all the other applications there that are on file currently at this time. Mr. Mayor, I'd make a motion to reinstate Jennifer Manchester, Chip Todd, and Eric Tyson for another term on the planning board, which would expire June 30th, 2023. Second. I have a motion and a second. Do I have any further, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We also have a term for the following ETJ member of the planning board, which will expire, expire on June 30th, 2021. A recommendation by the Mint Hill Board of Commissioners will need to be made to Mecklenburg County for the ETJ appointment. Current member at that, on that seat is Roger Hendricks. Roger has been let us know that he wishes to continue in that seat. You also have any applications attached to it? People, no, we don't have any other ETJ or applications. Roger's the only one, so. A motion to reinstate Roger Hendricks as ETJ member of the planning board with his term to expire June 30th, 2023. Second. I have a motion and a second. Do I have any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All appointees will serve until June 30th of 2023. Item number 13, other business and council matters. I'm gonna start with Commissioner Long. No, sir, it's, it's exciting to see new asphalt going down on Wilson Grove Road to Independence High School. And I do wanna give kudos to Steve and his crew with Public Works. I don't know that he had anything to do with this, but I think you should take credit. They improved a drainage issue at Nelson Road and Willgrove Mint Hill in the last week, which has been needing work for several years. So I think Steve probably gets credit for that. Thank you. Mr. Cochran. Chief Hatley, I think I see Chief come in somewhere. Uh, kudos to your officers. They're working very hard on the roads. Uh, I see them doing traffic stops and, and I appreciate uh, I think it's going to help the speeding that's going on in town that we know we all know people are speeding on 218 and down 51 and 35 zone and I see them sitting there policing that and I do appreciate that very much. Good public safety. Mayor Pro Tem Dalton. I'd like to follow up with uh, Mike also uh, saw uh, Officer Austin this week and he was talking how they had up a roadblock and he said it was surprising how many people were driving without insurance or license. Uh, the public is noticing this and it is very welcome. Thank you so much. And I'll go off of what uh, Brad also said. Uh, Mayor Brad, is, it is so good to go out and see people out here again, smiling faces and was able to get a few hugs before the meeting started. Uh, it's just a sign of things are coming back and it's so welcomed. Thank you. Commissioner Holton. On that, Saturday, first family fun night in what, a year and a half, two years? Yeah, it seems like it at least. Moving in the right direction. Um, I'm excited for it, and I hope we see a lot of big chunk of the town out there this Saturday night. Anybody from staff have anything? John, Lee, Chief. Or young man, anything from the fire department? Appreciate you being here. Uh, I just want to chime in that I love to see people back here in this room. Uh, you see staff sitting around here. Staff, I can promise you, has been working themselves to death no matter what was going on with this COVID thing. They just weren't out in the public and you didn't get to see them out there, but they've, they've been working hard uh, pulling the budget together. We've got a new website that I got a lot of compliments on. I was at a Qantas meeting earlier this week. Uh, we held it at the park where we were out in the open and it was fresh air and people didn't have masks on and, and uh, I just sat there and grinned for about an hour and 15 minutes. It thrilled me to death. But uh, Newtown website's up and running. You can stay up to the current events under everything that's going on on the website. Uh, staff still working on 
uh, some projects that we talked about during retreat, although a lot of them, are, they, a lot of them they got done. Um, and even Cheryl has a smile on her face because like you said, we're getting ready to start some of our town events together with some of our uh, family fun nights. Madness is on the agenda for October. So that'll be back. There's still rumors that we're going to have Christmas parade. Uh, and we're, we're all looking forward to that already. I already got people calling me wanting to know what they can do. So um, thanks to the town for making us look good through this COVID thing. Um, all, all of you stepped in and did well with uh, getting all your vaccines done. Any of you that haven't, uh, I would ask that you do it for your neighbor. You may not like to shot yourself, but your neighbor might be appreciative of it. So with that being said, I'll, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Make a motion. So moved. All in favor? Aye. We are so now adjourned.